my God, when I in ocean wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy path throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, friends, families, religious sisters in a particular way in your convents, the fathers, people of other faiths. Once again, we gather in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We gather as we've just finished the Feast of Pentecost, with the Holy Spirit in us, we gather to pray. Pray for our country, pray for the world, pray for our families, pray for all of us. I want you, I invite you today, to pray in a special way for our government. Government at the center, central government, government at the state level, your own governments in your own places. They have got great responsibility, uh, a pandemic for which they've got no experience of how things will go on, but it needs great wisdom, prudence, judgment, counsel, all the gifts which the Holy Spirit came to give us. They need it. We pray to them. Pray for them. Let's begin the sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking His forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to plead for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May you forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design. Keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us. Grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Kindly sit. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. You should be living holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain, so that he will find you at peace. Think of our Lord's patience as your opportunity to be saved. You have been warned about this, my friends. Be careful not to get carried away by the errors of unprincipled people from the firm ground that you are standing on. Instead, go on growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory in time and in eternity. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responses, 
O God, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next together. O God, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Before the mountains were born, or the earth or the world brought forth, you are God without beginning or end. Our response, O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. You turn men back into dust and say, Go back, sons of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. Our response, O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Our span is seventy years, or eighty for those who are strong, and most of these our emptiness and pain, they pass swiftly and we are gone. Our response, O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Show forth your work to your servants. Let your glory shine on their children. Our response, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Please stand for the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The word of God is something alive and active. It can judge secret emotions and thoughts. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, they sent to Jesus some of the Pharisees, some of the Herodians, to entrap him in his talk. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true. You care for no man. You do not regard the position of men, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a coin. Let me look at it. And they brought one. And he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, to God the things that are God's. And they were amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters, my dear brothers, my dear friends, families, religious sisters, fathers, uh, we've got, as we begin today's Mass, you certainly have noticed many changes. Uh, it's green vestments from the white we were having all, all this time yesterday, blue Feast of Our Lady. Again, the first reading was always the Acts. So here we've got the second reading of St. Peter. The Gospel was always John. Now we've got Mark. Lots of changes. Today we're beginning the ordinary time. In the first reading was from the second letter of St. Peter's, and I'm sure you're asking, was there a first letter of St. Peter's? Yes, there was. Peter wrote two letters, and, and this one is at the end of his second letter, where he's telling them at the very end, uh, behave yourselves, be good, follow the gospel, what Jesus taught you. And don't think that God, God's patience, uh, you're not feeling any ill effects of what you're doing, but give, take this as a time to repent. And so for us also the time to repent as we are uh, now gradually uh, trying to get out of the lockdown. And in this phase of a little, not very cl clear to anybody, to you, not to me either. 
But the gospel passage of, written by Mark, incidentally, both are written by Mark. Uh, Mark was like Peter's secretary. Uh, he was uh, the one who wrote down, and he's, this week we'll have Mark's gospel right through. Uh, and then, so the first reading also was, uh, it's letter of St. Peter, but written down, he, was, he listened to what Peter said, and so he gave us this uh, letter. Here again, we have Mark writing the story of Jesus and his gospel, and a very interesting, I would say, incident. The Pharisees and the Herodians were sent to try to trap Jesus. And uh, the Pharisees, I've told you before, were people who are very strict about the Jewish law. Uh, they did not go to the spirit of the law. Jesus was angry with them very often because they went to the letter, not the spirit. That spirit is much more important. That's why Jesus purified the law, as we'll see. And uh, the Herodians were people who were disciples of Herod. Herod was the uh, Jewish, the, the governor of that place. And so they wanted, they were a little loyal to uh, Rome. The taxes were being given to Rome. And so they said there were two different viewpoints, and they wanted to trap Jesus. If Jesus said, don't give, it to, to, don't give taxes, because that's what all the Jews were saying, that they, would, they, they would probably have reported Jesus through the Romans and had him arrested. If Jesus said, pay the taxes, they'd say, now all the Jews are saying that uh, we are under foreign domination and you're, you're going against our tradition that we are being suppressed. So either way, Jesus was in a trap. But Jesus, once again, he says he knew the hypocrisy, that's what they said. And he asked them, he knows what's in their mind. He's God, he knows what's in their mind. He told them, why are you testing me? And then he asks them, give me a coin. On the side, I, I feel uh, Jesus probably had no coins in his pocket at all. He was living such a poor life. So he had to ask somebody else for a coin. So they, they said, bring a coin. And the coin had the seal of Caesar. Caesar's the, uh, over there to indicate that uh, they are under Roman law. Also, the, the belief of them, whatever had the seal of Caesar, belonged to Caesar. I mean, that was his property, personal property. So by using those coins, they were accepting the uh, domination of Rome. So Jesus says this tremendously wise and transforming for our whole of philosophy and theology across the centuries. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. Uh, sisters, brothers, friends, we could reflect on this on and on and on. Uh, Lord Acton, the great historian, great philosopher, has, say, has commented and written about this, of how this has changed man's thinking. Uh, it, for once, Acton say, says, this really has uh, fully, uh, for the first time, given uh, some official sanctity to, to Caesar, to the government, to states. So they have authority, God-given authority, as we know. But also, it puts a limit to absolutism. Certain things belong to God. Not everything belongs to Caesar. So this is the beginning again of the whole philosophy of human rights, the value of the individual, the value of how uh, the person. My dear sisters and brothers, we are therefore in a situation where we understand the difference between Caesar, Caesar and God, that there are two different competences. He chose us, I think first principle is that Caesar has got authority from God. He's not to be disobeyed. It's not a man-made thing. There is divine intervention. There is God's hand in authority being given. That's why I asked you to pray for government. They are also, God has, in God's wisdom, they are our leaders, they are our, our prime minister, this is our president, this is our chief minister. We, they need our help. I, I want to share with you that I once told the prime minister of India, Vajpayee, I was talking to him and I told him that, I, uh, no, sorry, he asked me, he says, uh, Archbishop, uh, it's true that you pray for me, 
uh, every Sunday? And I said, yes, that's in our prayers of the faithful. So he says, thank you very much. Somebody told me about this, he said. And, I, and then this present Prime Minister Modi, I mentioned to him once when I met him, that we pray for you regularly in our churches. We pray. They are our authority. So they, need, they also deserve our loyalty. We, these uh, laws which the government makes are to be observed. That's why uh, I went even on national TV saying, observe what the government is saying in this pandemic. And uh, this is important for our safety, safety of the people. They are put over there to coordinate things. They know why they're doing it and must follow them. But then also the second principle is not everything is the state. Not everything is Caesar's. There's a certain thing which belongs to God. I think it was in Ambrose, not sure. Uh, he said, see, the, on this coin there was a stamp of Caesar, but on us there is the stamp of God. We are made in the image of God. Therefore, our heart, our souls belong to God. And therefore, that loyalty to God is essential. Render to Caesar what is Caesar's, render to God what is God. We should have the wisdom, the prudence, the understanding which the Holy Spirit gives us to understand how we've got to give Caesar his due, participating in all government responsibilities, taking positions of a civil responsibility, also paying taxes, not cheating on that. That's our responsibility. It's our government. On the other hand, also our responsibility to follow our consciences where God is concerned. Render to Caesar what is Caesar's, render to God what is God. That's, that really is the principle in our whole God and state relations. Sisters and brothers, pray. I invite you to pray. It's a, it's a difficult time for all of us. It's a difficult time also for the government. I understand the anxiety they are going through. Many of them have been in touch with me. Uh, some of them phone for advice. Uh, I understand the uncertainty they themselves have. This is the first time no one has had any experience of this before, how to coordinate things. They need our prayers. Our prayers, but they need God's assistance. They need the Holy Spirit's assistance, wisdom, counsel, understanding, piety, fear of the Lord. They need all that. We pray for them. Pray that everything goes off well. We pray that God blesses our country, God blesses your country. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. water and wine, may we come to share in his divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins. Cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, we even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, that he freely accepted, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be free from sin and safe from all distress. We wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let's offer the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the smingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive him. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. 
Govern by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you, not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks a lot once again. God bless you. Have a nice day. Uh, today we'll have uh, children are not forgotten. Uh, a special catechesis for you. Uh, this is I've asked Father Joshan uh, to prepare something specially for you. Uh, I've not seen it myself, so I, I don't know what's the surprise going to come. I'm going to watch it. And then after that, I'm going to have with Father Michael will lead us in another method of prayer. A short while after that, that's for the whole family. This is for children, but others other also please watch that program. God bless you. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to fix eyes on Jesus who has fought the good fight to the end and to be the grain that's fallen to the crown to die and rise again this is my sacrifice and open year i pray you, Lord, I come to do your will. You, Lord, I come to do your will.